Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. This video is about natural ink making and as you can see some ideas on how to use your natural inks. So we'll talk about making the ink and then we'll go project by project. I think I have about 10 or 11 projects that you can actually do with the inks. All right, let's get started. These are the inks that I will be discussing in this video. This is by no means an exhaustive list. These are simply the things that I had in my kitchen. Turmeric, black tea, paprika, coffee, cranberry tea, and red cabbage. In the past, I've used avocado skins and pits, onion skins, tea coffee, party streamers, all sorts of stuff. I will link those videos down below. But today we are discussing these six ingredients, I suppose you can call them. And when I say inks, I mean a wash or a watercolor, a solution. It's not really an ink where you can use it as an ink for writing. I mean, I didn't really try, you know, using it as an ink, but maybe you could. So let's start off with how I made the inks, and then we're going to move on to actually using the inks for projects. So it took me all of about half an hour last night to make all of these inks, and I have plenty left. You've just seen how much I've got left. That's all after the projects, or the projects that I've done. So you really don't need much. All right, let's start with turmeric. I used approximately three teaspoons of ground turmeric and approximately half a cup of water. I didn't measure anything. I didn't follow any instructions. I just simply experimented. Water and turmeric, and then I boiled it for a couple of minutes. Why did I boil it? I don't know. I thought maybe by boiling it, it will extract more color. Perhaps you don't need to boil it. I mean, the color didn't change. It was this color. And obviously I didn't boil it in this little jar. I boiled it in a different utensil suitable for boiling. Once that was done, I strained it through gauze. You can see it's all colored yellow. And there was a whole thick paste that I had to remove, a paste of turmeric. So all that I'm left with here is the solution. There's no turmeric, there's no paste in there. So it's important to strain uh, through something. Next solution on the list is black tea. That's this one here. Any black tea will do. And I used five bags in approximately one cup of water. So one cup of boiling water. I just let it sit there in there in the cup for, you know, however long, I don't know, a few minutes until I got this solution. There's really not much to it. The next one on the list is paprika. This is the one that I used and I followed the exact same steps that I did for turmeric. Three teaspoons in about half a cup of hot water and then I boiled it again. It probably doesn't even need boiling, but I boiled it for about five-ish minutes. Actually, I should say I simmered it for about five minutes. And then again, I strained it through this. It needed to be strained because again, there was a paste. And we don't want paste in there, you know, you just want solution in there. Next on the list is coffee. Very straightforward, this one. I used about three teaspoons of this Nescafe coffee. Any coffee will do. Three teaspoons in about half a cup of water, boiling water, and gave it a little stir and that's it. I didn't add any baking soda, which you can do to reduce the acidity of the coffee if you want to. But I didn't do any of that stuff. I've seen people put vinegar and salt and all that sort of stuff. That's more a preservative if you want to keep your solutions for longer. Next one on the list is the cranberry tea. It's actually this one. It's cranberry and pomegranate flavored infusion. And the only reason why I decided to experiment with this is because when I make the tea, it's red or it looks red or pinkish. So I used five bags in a cup of boiling water, exactly the same steps as for the black tea. Let it sit in there for about five minutes or so, took out the tea bags, squeezed them out, and I got this red solution. It looks really, really dark in this jar. You can't really see, it almost looks like wine. That's another thing I've seen. I wouldn't want to waste wine, to be honest with you, but this looks like wine. And this is the color that it gives. It's not red at all. It's this dark blue color. It's quite beautiful. And the last one on the list is red cabbage. This is the solution and you can see it looks purple. And here's the cabbage that I use. I can't believe I'm actually showing cabbage in a video, but anyway, that's what I used. I took off a few layers, not much, maybe a handful, and I kind of cut them down and I boiled them in about, let's say a cup of water, boiled them on the stove for about five minutes. And this beautiful purple color actually turns out blue in the projects. I love this color. 
I encourage you to go into your kitchen and have a look at all of the little spices you have in your spice cabinet and vegetables perhaps that you have in your fridge and you can experiment with small batches you don't need to make huge batches to dye you know sheets upon sheets of paper you can have little jars like i do have here little jars of a little bit of ink it's going to go a long way but i imagine you do have to keep them in the fridge for a couple of days and then just get rid of them or use them up within the next few days because most likely especially this red cabbage solution if it's sitting out on your counter for seven days it's gonna go bad same with coffee tea anything they all have water in it they're all gonna go bad so make small batches use them all up experiment 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 and let us know in the comments down below of other things that you have used what experiments have you done let us know of both the successful ones and the unsuccessful ones why not but i say let's move right along and let's make some projects with these inks and side note i will put these recipes let's call them recipes i'll pop them down in the description box below so that you have them on hand if you require them all right let's have a little play first thing i'm going to do is just paint some ripped up watercolor paper and i'm hoping that my result is going to look like a handmade paper And let's have a look what we've got. This is red cabbage. You can see against white paper. It looks a bit more baby blue in real life than it does in the video. Next, we have coffee. You know what that looks like, probably. Next one is turmeric. The only thing I don't like about this is the straight lines when I painted the paper. So I'll probably saturate this a little bit more. It is quite yellow, but it's not coming up in the video. I'm not sure why next we have black tea and paprika and lastly this one's quite dark it's quite beautiful that's this one here i just used it because the tea looks red when i make the tea looks red so i need to ink some edges and there's my little batch of faux handmade paper i ripped some pieces a little bit smaller so that they or they can all be visible and i have a plan for this here we go And there we go, a cute little faux handmade little package. Perhaps I can pop in one of the rift pieces in there, something like that. Maybe a little something from this booklet. All of these pieces, by the way, are from Takeology. That makes it a little bit more special, finishes it off nicely. Maybe I can pop that in there. I like it. All right, that's that one done. Next little project I want to try is painting one piece of paper with all the colors, and hopefully it's going to create like a blending kind of look or a marble effect. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, let's see what happens. and here it is all nice and dry i also went ahead and created two more this one and then on this one i added splotches with the cranberry tea after it was dry and that's why it's looking so dark so when the paper dried then i did the splotches whereas on this one here i did the splotches while everything was still wet and you can see a huge difference absolutely beautiful i love it i mean i could experiment more with this and i'm planning to use this as all sorts of things i can rip them up into pieces and create collages again or pages in journals or backgrounds for art journals all sorts of stuff i can create a little mini art journal with just these three pages i think that would look quite cool even better i can paint the other side as well so i'm quite happy with how this looks next thing i'm going to do is just use these four colors paprika turmeric coffee and tea and while everything is still wet i'm going to apply some salt it says cooking salt but it's not fine cooking salt and it's also not rock salt either somewhere in between i want to give it a go and see what happens
All right, here's how this is looking when it's dry. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the salt. I think this works better with alcohol inks, the salt thing, but anyway, I'm gonna go and get rid of this salt and let's have a look at the final result. I'm actually really loving it. So some of the salt particles are completely embedded in there, which means that there's a really beautiful texture to this paper. This would be perfect as canvas for, you know, collage work and stuff like that. I think it looks absolutely beautiful, especially these splotches of yellow. I did miss a spot here, no big deal. But I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. Quite a nice little selection of beautiful papers. Oh, I love it. Next thing I want to try is some mug stains or, or circles, kind of like this, circles all over the paper and I'm going to use lids from all of my pots. And here it is, the final effect. It looks quite nice. I just inked the edges and I'm loving the dark splotches. That's kind of the close-up look right there. I can do all sorts of stuff with this. I'm thinking maybe even ripping it up into smaller pieces and crafting with it as I would with any other paper. Another thing I could try is next time perhaps is uh, using smaller circles and like really large ones. All of these lids are similar size so the effect is very uniform. I think it will be better if next time I can try something like this, a really large mug or something and then and then a little lid like that so then I can have you know different effects. And of course another thing that I haven't mentioned is you can always mix the colors and then like look at this green. I don't have a green. No green in here but if I mix the colors then I can get different colors. <laughs> Yeah. Next thing I want to try is collage and this here is my inspiration. All right, so now that my piece is dry, I can start collaging. Here is my inspiration and I'm going to start by inking the edges. And here we go, edges inked. Next thing I want to do, I just ripped up some book pages and first I'm going to ink the edges. Now that that's done, I'm going to glue these pieces down. All right, so I have some writing there, just like writing here. And now I'm gonna start gluing some more pieces down. So I just picked up these two pieces. Maybe I'm gonna ink the edges. I'm just kind of testing things out. Maybe this as well, we'll see. Glue that one down, glue this one down. And now this one somewhere. And now for the, the fun part, I'm gonna do the coffee stains. So grab a little mug and a little plate. And I'm just going to transfer some coffee and now I'm going to do this. Maybe I can go in with something smaller. Yeah, I reckon that will do. And now since there's already some splashes happening, I might just splash some more. All right, I don't want to go overboard, but I'm going to let this dry and then I will continue. All right, so that's all nice and dried and it's looking quite nice. And now the last thing I want to do is just add bits and pieces like some flowers that we have here and just little bits and pieces. So I pulled out this see-through sticker, perhaps a little something like this, maybe underneath there. And then some faux postage stamps, something like that. I'm going to glue it all down and I'll be right back. And here it is, a finished little collage piece. You can see how cool these coffee stains look. I think I managed to recreate the feel of this one here, perhaps a bit more. It's completely different, but I was using the elements I was seeing here in this design to make my collage. And this piece would be perfect on a journal cover like this. I love how that looks. And then when I make this journal, of course, nothing in there yet, but I can have all coffee dyed wrapping paper, I mean watercolor paper, not wrapping paper, or just tea dyed uh, standard paper like this. And it really goes with that beautiful aesthetic. Next little project I want to try is dyeing some white lace. And 
and the lace is all dry now so let's see I'm absolutely loving some of these imprints I'm gonna keep this paper look at this look how perfect that looks especially this one here anyway so as you've seen I simply put the lace in and took it out straight away if you were to soak the lace in the solution overnight or for a few hours the color would be much more effective or, or stronger I suppose depending on what you're after I actually prefer this I don't want them more saturated with color I really like how this looks next thing I'm gonna try is coloring some muslin or color code depends where you live and what you call it but basically I'm gonna color some fabric And this is all nice and dry. Let's peel it off. And here are the results. It's looking quite good. This one's really dark. I can use this for all sorts of projects in my paper crafts and journal making and covers and clusters and all sorts of stuff. And now at least I know also if I want to get a specific color like this rusty, it's really beautiful rusty color. And when they're layered as well, you know, it would look quite nice. Something like this maybe. On a journal cover, a book plate in there. We can do all sorts of stuff with this. Next little project I'm gonna try is embossed paper. I feel like the color would look really beautiful, make everything stand out even more. I hope so. Let's give it a go. And here is the result. Look at that really nice, beautiful, vibrant color. I did saturate the paper and I am absolutely loving. Look at this. I think that's the cabbage one. The cabbage is coming up as blue. Turmeric, red tea, coffee, paprika and black tea. Absolutely beautiful. That was a total win. Another thing I want to try are these doilies. This is cut up from an old tablecloth and I have these little pieces and I'm going to go ahead and dye them. I am loving how saturated with color they are. Look how stunningly beautiful these look. There's all different colors throughout, so I think it's got something to do with perhaps the thickness of material in certain spaces. I'm not sure. I am loving these different effects. And then I can mix and match. Or maybe not. This looks much better, doesn't it? And now I've got all of these little off-cut pieces like this, and I want to make perhaps a little, like a swatch or sample swatch or something like that. And here are my little sample swatches and then I also went a little bit crazy with creating more and more and more because ideas will come. How cool is this? I'm just loving the idea and the look of this. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to make with it. Well, I'm going to make it like a little swatch, but it can be a theme to follow in a journal color scheme or something like that. Okay, now what? I'm liking how that's looking. And there's my little swatch. It looks better the other way when I'm holding it like that, but it has to be attached onto something. It is nice to have a little swatch. Or I can always change my mind and do something like that. I know it doesn't look like it because all of these are coming up as different colors. That's because they are all different materials, but they are all from the same tea which is that cranberry and pomegranate tea. And here's a cute little package. Oh, I forgot the fabric. I don't know, I'm just grasping at straws now, but you know, this is a little impromptu package. You can make all sorts of different things, you know, uh, dye all sorts of different materials with your inks, and then you can prepare little packages in a dyed envelope and you can mix and match them. Probably would be better to mix and match them, but I feel like this idea could be a whole nother video, like making little packages with your natural inks. 
you know it can be put together and presented in so many different ways and like with something like this for example you know it can be a I don't know it's just so many things that we can do and I really like this idea much better than the initial swatch idea things I did all these projects and I still have I barely used any of the inks if I'm being honest barely any I would probably store these inks in the fridge and use them within the next couple of days or otherwise I would freeze them because they're not going to last very long they will go bad so that's a thing to keep in mind I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got lots and lots of ideas please let me know what you think let me know some of the other materials that you have used I have used avocado skins and pits onion skins tea coffee of course all of that will be like linked down below i have videos separate videos on those things but in any case thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye